Hey, Steve Ostrowski here. So in this example, um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you actually how to mesh to, to model. Um, a lot of times you can do uh, automated modeling we have in RealWorks and do it very well, like you see here with the uh, pipe extraction. Um, that'll run through, and I've already done it, the auto extract cylinders. You could also do easy pipe um, for one-offs. Um, but for small conduit, um, small diameter piping and or objects are kind of uh, weird shaped objects that sometimes it's better to do just a meshing like here. I will actually mesh what you see here is this pump. So if I come in here, um, I probably want to segment it down just so I'm only bringing that portion in, which I will do very quickly. Um, by selecting here. And then coming into the side here. Get rid of some other stuff that I don't really need. Um, obviously, I could come in here and do it very exact, but I'm just trying to be as quick as I can. What is this stuff? Yeah, it's garbage. And so the more not pump I can get rid of, the better it is. But you can see here I have a eh, decent coverage. I don't have the back of it, <clears throat> but I don't necessarily need the back um, because it's just going to exist as a 3D object when I bring it back into um, when I export it as a IFC or DWG and I bring it into uh, Revit, or uh, sorry, Navisworks or Revit or, or, or AutoCAD in that case. So after I've clipped up my area, I'm gonna go into the surfacing and do a mesh creation. Um, I typically use no, project, no projection because I'm not trying to do this as accurate. I just want it to fit to the point cloud and then just hit preview mesh. Um, and they'll create that. Uh, what's nice is in an IFC, there's no real geometry limit or vertex, but there is in DWG. So if you can create an IFC, if you're going to Navisworks, but obviously if you're going back to to AutoCAD, you're going to want to sample even more. Um, you can, and this may have been a poor example, that might've been something I actually wanted to do before, which is down sample the cloud. Um, and actually I will redo that fairly quickly here after the meshing is created. Um, here we have some additional uh, segmentation. So it actually opened that tool automatically before you perform the meshing. Um, and then we have the sampling tool. So I'm actually going to um, do that sampling tool real quick and once I once it catches up, um, because it's probably just a lot of points there. And so if I am going to mesh, it will speed up the process to just downsample, because that's essentially what I'm already doing with the meshing anyways, is downsampling the point cloud to a 3D object. That kind of weird shape 3D object is going to best fit and represent the space best. I would definitely suggest if you can, just sending a clip down RCP of these or the full project as an RCP um, for others to share, but it is sometimes just wanted to be in a 3D object, not into a point cloud. Um, so we will, uh, no. So here, um, if I go to mesh creation, uh, I can do this outside of it, or I can do it in here, do a down sampling, a spatial sampling of, we'll go 0 0.02 feet, uh, quarter inch. It's usually what I'm used to, so we're going to switch it to inches. 0.24, yeah. And so that's only 700,000 points. Again, not huge, but again, anything I can s save on it, um, just the faster it will create. Uh, <clears throat> So once this mesh is created, um, I can export it and I will export it and then bring it into the Navisworks project to see where it lives as well. Um, so create display points. You can see this is essentially the object I've just created. I can close that, um, select it here, and then export it as either an IFC um, here and I will put this where I know I can delete it later. 
uh, IFC uh, and hit it. Uh, the export frame is just home. So since these point clouds are geo referenced and registered uh, correctly with field link and X7 data, it'll pop in in the right spot here, um, back in, back in Revit. So um, the other thing I wanted to show was uh, how to do this with a DWG as well. And the one thing that's important to note with the DWG is your uh, units. So uh, I'll keep it in inches and then export it actually in inches as well. And I guess before I can get that, I can actually come in here and mesh heading. And so this will help me um, create less detail or um, less triangles. So I can actually just reduce them to fit for the DWG. You can come in here and edit, delete things away, even fill fill spots as well. Um, but my object is, is speed. So I, I'm okay with a lot of what's there. After it's done doing that reduction, I will apply it and then export it out as a uh, this less uh, less detailed point cloud as a DWG here. And maybe that was too much, but it's, it's still okay. So then if I come back into Navisworks, I can open up both those. Um, bring this one in first. And you can see my point cloud, actually the old drawing as well. So let's uh, hide these and we will hide the actual drawing. <laughs> um, and you can see there's where that point cloud is. I can bring in the same IFC and you should see it as um, a little more detailed as well. Uh, so this is good for uh, random objects. The next thing would be smaller diameter pipe. Um, pipe extraction does good on most I mean, above an inch certainly is what you want to do. Um, turn this off. Hide and hide. See a little more detail there as well. Um, but we'll turn this back off and we'll move back to the other portion. But if I wanted to, to run through some conduit like you see here, um, generally uh, it's not going to see it all. So you'd want to edit it a lot. and. If you're just representing the conduit, it might be faster to just mesh it um, as well. So if I come back over here and segment the point cloud uh, so that I can see that just that conduit is what I want to focus on. And we'll live with this conduit. We'll change some colors just to make it a So this rack right here is what we'll go with. And so I can see that's decent. Maybe I want to get rid of some more of this junk. Oh. 